Na ibn Lamech ibn Methuselah Arabic, new translate. Na, known as Noah in the Old Testament, is recognized in Islam as a prophet and apostle of God Arabic, al Allah. He is an important figure in Islamic tradition, as he is one of the earliest prophets sent by God to mankind. According to Islam, Noah's mission was to save a wicked world, plunged in depravity and sin. God charged Noah with the duty of preaching to his people to make them abandon idolatry and to worship only the one creator and to live good and pure lives. Although he preached the message of God with zeal, his people refused to mend their ways, leading to his building of the Ark and the Deluge, the great flood in which all the evil people of his time perished. Noah's preaching and prophethood spanned 950 years according to Quran. Noah's mission had a double character, he had to warn his people, asking them to call for repentance and, at the same time, he had to preach about God's mercy and forgiveness, promising them the glad tidings God would provide if they led righteous lives. References to Noah are scattered throughout the Quran, and there is even an entire surah carrying his name, Noah. Topic. Background Little is known of Noah's personal history before his call to prophecy. However, Ibn Kathir records him to have been the son of Lamech and grandson of Methuselah, one of the patriarchs from the generations of Adam. Noah was neither the leader of the tribe nor a very rich man but, even before being called to prophecy, he worshipped God faithfully and was, in the words of the Quran, a devotee most grateful. According to Islam, he was a prophet, sent to warn mankind of that region and his people to change their ways. He conveyed the message for over 950 years. For Muslims, Noah was married to a woman whose name is not mentioned in the Quran. Some Islamic historians such as Al-Tabari have suggested that the name of Noah's wife was Umzra bint Barakil but this cannot be confirmed. Most Muslims simply call her by her biblical name Nama. Islamic scholars agree that Noah had four sons whose names were Ham, Shem, Yam and Japheth. According to the Quran, one of Noah's sons was a disbeliever who refused to come aboard the ark, instead preferring to climb a mountain, where he drowned. It is agreed among most Islamic scholars that Yam was the one who drowned, the other three remained believers. The Quran states that Noah's wife was not a believer with him so she did not join him, neither did one of Noah's sons, Yam, who was secretly a disbeliever but had pretended faith in front of Noah. The sons of Noah are not expressly mentioned in the Quran, except for the fact that one of the sons was among the people who did not follow his own father, not among the believers and thus was washed away in the flood. Also the Quran indicates a great calamity, enough to have destroyed Noah's people, but to have saved him and his generations to come. Topic. Historical narrative in Islam Islamic literature recounts that in the generations of Adam, many men and women continued to follow Adam's original teachings, worshipping God alone and remaining righteous. Among Adam's descendants there were many brave and pious men, greatly loved and revered by their respective communities. Exegesis goes on to narrate that, upon the death of these elders, people felt enormous grief and some felt prompted to make statues of these people in remembrance of them. Then, gradually, through the generations many forgot what such statues were for and began to worship them, as the shaitan Satan slowly deceived each generation along with many other idols. In order to guide the people, God appointed Noah with the duty of being the next prophet to humanity. Topic. Early preaching According to Islamic belief, Noah began preaching to his people both verbally and by example. He would praise God consistently and he urged his people to do the same, warning his tribe of the punishment they would face if they did not mend their ignorant ways. The Quran states that Noah repeatedly told his people, O oh my people, worship Allah, you have no deity other than him. Indeed, I fear for you the punishment of a tremendous day. Al Quran, 759. Early on, a few were moved by Noah's words, but the powerful and wealthy members of the tribe refused to hear his call. The unbelievers at the time were impelled to rebel by various evil motives. Firstly, they were extremely envious and jealous of men superior to them in any way. Secondly, the people were ignorant of the weak and lowly, who were frequently superior intellectually, morally and spiritually. As a result of their ignorance, they were arrogant and mocked all who they felt were inferior to them. Saying, Are we to believe you, when those who follow you are the most abject of people? Noah responded, their judgment rests only with my Lord, if you could perceive. 
When Noah preached the faith of God to them, all they did was revile the messenger, abuse the message and call the whole warning a lie. He then went on to explain the message in greater depth, ensuring them that it was not a message of destruction but it was a message with the mercy from God, and that their acts would lead to destruction if they did not accept the faith. He questioned them, asking why they would not accept what would benefit them in the near future. Noah went on to further, and told his community that he asked of no reward from them, telling them his only reward would be from God. But his people threatened him with being stoned. Topic. Accusation As time passed, Noah became firmer in his preaching. When the unbelievers began insulting those who accepted God's message, believing that Noah would send those faithful away to attract the wealthy unbelievers, Noah revealed that they, the arrogant and ignorant rich, were the wicked and sinful ones. His people accused him of being soothsayer or diviner. Noah declared that he was by no means a mere fortune teller, pretending to reveal secrets which are not worth revealing. Noah also denied accusations claiming Noah was an angel, always maintaining that he was a human messenger. When the people refused to acknowledge their sinfulness Noah told them that it was not Noah, but God that would punish them, however God pleased. Topic. Noah's prayer The Quran states that Noah prayed to God, telling him that his preaching only made his people disbelieve further. Noah told God how they had closed their minds to accepting the message, so that the light of the truth should not affect their thinking. Noah told God how he had used all the resources of the classical preacher, conveying the message both in public places and with individuals in private. Noah spoke of how he had told the people the rewards they would receive if they became righteous, namely that God would supply plentiful rain as a blessing, and that God would also guarantee them an increase in children and wealth. Topic. Building of the Ark According to the Quran, one day, Noah received a revelation from God, in which he was told that no one would believe the message now aside from those who have already submitted to God. Noah's frustration at the defiance of his people led him to ask God to not leave even one sinner upon earth. Although there is no proof that God accepted his prayer as there is many examples of accepted prayers, such as in case of Eunice, Lut, Lot, Suleiman, Solomon, etc., even Noah's prayer in some other shape was accepted, God decreed that a terrible flood would come and yet, Quran doesn't say it came to cover whole earth and he ordered Noah to build a ship Safina, which would save him and the believers from this dreadful calamity. Ever obedient to God's instructions, Noah went out in search of material with which to build the vessel. When Noah began building the ark, the people who saw him at work laughed at him even more than before. Their conclusion was that he was surely a madman, they could not find any other reason why a man would build a huge vessel when no sea or river was nearby. Although Noah was now very old, the aged patriarch continued to work tirelessly until, at last, the ship was finished. Topic. Praise of Noah in the Quran Noah is praised by God in the Quran, which shows his great status amongst the prophets. In Surah 17, Al -isra, Ayah 3, God states, Verily he was a devotee most grateful. Also, from the Quran which states, In the days of old, Noah cried to us, and we are the best to hear prayer. And we delivered him and his people from the great calamity, and made his progeny to endure on this earth. And we left this blessing for him among generations to come in later times. Peace and salutation to Noah among the nations. And also in Surah 3, Al I Imran, Ayah 33, it states, Allah did choose Adam and Noah, the family of Abraham, and the family of Imran above all people. Topic: The story of Noah, as told by Quranic verses. The Quran states that Noah was inspired by God, like other prophets such as Ibrahim Abraham, Ismail Ishmael, Isaac Isaac, Jacob Jacob, Isa Jesus, Ilyas Elijah, Ayub Job, Harun Aaron, Eunice Jonah, Dod David and Muhammad Muhammad, and that he was a faithful messenger. Noah had firm belief in the oneness of God, and preached Islam literally, submission meaning submission to God, he continuously warned the people of the painful doom that was coming and asked them to accept one God instead of worshipping idols such as Wad, Suwa, Yaghuth, Ya'ak and Nasser. 
He called the people to serve God, and said that nobody but God could save them. He said that the time of the deluge was appointed and could not be delayed, and that the people had to submit to God. God commanded Noah to build a ship, the ark, and as he was building it, the chieftains passed him and mocked him. Upon its completion, the ship is said to be loaded with pairs of every animal available that time, and Noah's household, and a group of believers who did submit to God. The people who denied the message of Noah, including one of his own sons, drowned. The final resting place of the ship was referred to as Al Judea. Arabic, al ju wadi or a Munzalanam Mubarakan. Arabic, mu n zala mu ba araka literally, place of landing blessed. Noah is called a grateful servant. Both Noah and Abraham were taught the prophethood and the scripture. God commanded Noah to take all species that he needed on the ship. The commentary by prophetic descendants explains the verse to mean eight animals. Noah's family Noah's wife Nama, is referred to in the Quran as an evil woman. When God emphasizes upon the notion that everyone is for themselves on the day of judgment and that marital relations will not be to your aid when the judgment takes place, the Quran says, Allah sets forth, for an example to the unbelievers, the wife of Noah and the wife of Lut, they were, respectively, under two of our righteous servants, but they were false to their husbands, and they profited nothing before Allah on their account, but were told, Enter ye the fire along with others that enter. In contrast, the wife of the Pharaoh of the Exodus, Asiya, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, are referred to as among the best of women. This adds to the notion that, on the last day, everyone will be judged according to their own deeds. Stories of the prophets explain that the son who declined to embark was a non-believer. <laughs> Comparative mythology Flood myths appear in many societies worldwide and many of the details of the Islamic myth are shared with other Middle Eastern societies. Mesopotamian The Noah story of the Pentateuch is almost identical to a flood story contained in the Mesopotamian Epic of Gilgamesh, composed about 2500 BC. The few variations including the number of days of the deluge, the order of the birds, and the name of the mountain on which the ark rests. The flood story in Genesis chapters 6-8 matches the Gilgamesh flood myth so closely that University of London professor Andrew R. George believes, "...few doubt that it derives from a Mesopotamian account." What is particularly noticeable is the way the Genesis flood story follows the Gilgamesh flood tale, "...point by point and in the same order." even when the story permits other alternatives. The earliest written flood myth is found in the Mesopotamian Epic of Atrahasis and Epic of Gilgamesh texts. These mythologies are the source of such features of the biblical flood story as the building and provisioning of the ark, its flotation, and the subsidence of the waters, as well as the part played by the human protagonist. The Encyclopedia Judaica adds that there is a strong suggestion that an intermediate agent was active. The people most likely to have fulfilled this role are the Hurrians, whose territory included the city of Haran, where the patriarch Abraham had his roots. The Hurrians inherited the flood story from Babylonia. The encyclopedia mentions another similarity between the stories, Noah is the tenth patriarch and Barassus notes that, "...the hero of the great flood was Babylonia's tenth antediluvian king." However, there is a discrepancy in the ages of the heroes. For the Mesopotamian antecedents, the reigns of the antediluvian kings range from 18,600 to nearly 65,000 years. In the Bible, the lifespans fall far short of the briefest reign mentioned in the related Mesopotamian texts. Also, the name of the hero differs between the traditions. The earliest Mesopotamian flood account, written in the Sumerian language, calls the deluge hero Ziasudra. Gilgamesh's historical reign is believed to have been approximately 2700 BC, shortly before the earliest known written stories. The discovery of artifacts associated with Aga and Enmibaragesi of Kish, two other kings named in the stories, has lent credibility to the historical existence of Gilgamesh. Topic. Sumerian The earliest Sumerian Gilgamesh poems date from as early as the 3rd dynasty of Ur 2000 BC. 
One of these poems mentions Gilgamesh's journey to meet the flood hero, as well as a short version of the flood story. The earliest Akkadian versions of the unified epic are dated to ca. 2000–1500 BC. Due to the fragmentary nature of these old Babylonian versions, it is unclear whether they included an expanded account of the flood myth, although one fragment definitely includes the story of Gilgamesh's journey to meet Unapishtim. The standard Akkadian version included a long version of the flood story and was edited by Sin Lik Unani sometime between 1300 and 1000 BC. Unapishtim, a character in the Epic of Gilgamesh, tells the story of a flood very similar to that of Noah. In this story, the gods are enraged by the noise that man has raised from the earth. To quiet them they decide to send a great flood to silence mankind. Various correlations between the stories of Noah and Unapishtim the flood, the construction of the ark, the salvation of animals, and the release of birds following the flood have led to this story being seen as the inspiration for the story of Noah. However, his role in Gilgamesh is to provide the secret of everlasting life to the hero, who promptly falls asleep before Unapishtim gives him the secret of life. Topic. Ancient Greek Noah has often been compared to Deucalion, the son of Prometheus and Pronoia in Greek mythology. Like Noah, Deucalion is warned of the flood by Zeus and Poseidon, he builds an ark and staffs it with creatures, and when he completes his voyage, gives thanks and takes advice from the gods on how to repopulate the earth. Deucalion also sends a pigeon to find out about the situation of the world and the bird returns with an olive branch. Deucalion, in some versions of the myth, also becomes the inventor of wine, like Noah. Philo and Justin equate Deucalion with Noah, and Josephus used the story of Deucalion as evidence that the flood actually occurred and that, therefore, Noah existed. <inaudible> Hindu A story involving Lord Vishnu and King Manu is found in the Hindu chronicle Matsya Purana. Lord Vishnu in his Matsya fish avatar ordered the virtuous king Manu to construct a huge boat with animal and plant specimens of all forms, to escape the great deluge, and finally when the water receded, the great boat was found atop the Malaya Mountains. Encyclopedia Britannica notes that Manu combines the characteristics of the Hebrew Bible figures of Noah, who preserved life from extinction in a great flood, and Adam, the first man, which view is reflected in several other works. Indologist David Dean Shulman writes that borrowing between the myths of Manu and Noah cannot be ruled out. For Krishna Mohan Banerjee, the names Noah and Manu had the same etymological root. Manu must have been the Indo Aryan ideal of Noah. Philologist and founder of the Asiatic Society of Bengal, William Jones, identifies Manu with Noah, along with whom the seven sages can be identified with the eight people aboard the ark." Furthermore, researcher Klaus Klostermeyer reports a Muslim writer who "...identifies Brahma with Abraham and Manu with Noah." Others, however, would say that "...the story is thoroughly Indian," and the "...boat is not the equivalent of Noah's ark, though it is still the symbol of salvation." According to Purana Manu's story occur before 28 Chaturyuga in the present Manvantara which is the seventh Manvantara. This amounts to 120 million years ago. <laughs> Tomb of Noah There are several sites that are claimed to be the Tomb of Noah. Noz Mausoleum, Islam, Nakhchivan, exclave of Azerbaijan west of Armenia. Imam Ali Mosque, Shia Islam, Najaf, Iraq. Karak Na, Lebanon. Siz, Turkey. Topic. References to Noah in the Quran. As one of the first messengers, 4 to 163, 6 to 84, 11 25, 26 to 107, 29 to 14, 37 to 75, 57 to 26, 71 to 1 minus 2, 71 to 5. 
Nose preaching, 4 to 163, 759, 7 to 61-64, 10 to 71-72, 11:25-26, 11:28-31, 11:42, 23:23, 26 to 105-106, 26 to 108, 26 to 110, 71 to 1 3, 71 to 8 minus 20. Challenges for Noah, 7 to 60 minus 61, 10 to 71, 11 27, 11 32, 14 to 9, 23 24 minus 26, 25 to 37, 26 to 105, 26 to 111 minus 113, 26 to 116 minus 118, 38 to 12, 40 to 5, 50 to 12, 53 to 52, 54 to 9 minus 10, 66 to 10, 71 to 6 minus 7, 71 to 21 minus 24, 71 to 26 minus 27. The thankful. Noah, 17 to 3. Noah's wishes granted, 21 to 76 minus 77, 26 to 119, 37 to 75, 54 to 11 minus 12. God destroyed Noah's people, 7 to 64, 9 to 70, 10 to 73, 1137, 1143 minus 44, 11 to 89, 23 27, 25 to 37, 26 to 120, 29 to 14, 37 to 82, 40 to 31, 51 to 46, 53 to 52, 54 to 11 minus 12, 71 to 25. Noah was saved on the ark, 7 to 64, 10 to 73, 1137 minus 38, 1140 minus 44, 1148, 23 27 minus 29, 26 to 119, 29 to 15, 37 to 76, 54 to 13 minus 15, 69 to 11. Appraisal for Noah, 17 to 3, 37 to 78 minus 81, 66 to 10. Topic. See also Searches for Noah's Ark, sometimes referred to as archaeology Muhammad in Islam Epic of Gilgamesh Seven Laws of Noah Biblical Narratives and the Quran Legends and the Quran Prophets of Islam Stories of the Prophets Noah's Ark, the vessel in the Genesis Flood narrative References <laughs>